a seat to be had here today at Mountaineer Field. At any time the Canes come a visiting, it's a big game. Head coach Dennis Erickson and the Miami Hurricanes are about to pour onto this field after winning the coin toss. They have deferred. Jackaroot, this is a wonderful setting here for a big game. Well, Brent, consider these facts for the University of Miami Hurricanes since 1985. They have played top 10 nationally ranked opponents over 30 times. So it may be a big game, but they're not at all intimidating. In fact, intimidation is not a factor. According to middle linebacker, according to linebacker Rohan Marley, a sophomore, he says it doesn't matter what house they play in. We never intimidate. I don't think there's one guy in that football team that gets intimidated by coming in. Everywhere we go, it's our house. Here, it's our house. We just a home away from home. We never intimidated. Conversely, for the West Virginia Mountaineers, they say this is the biggest game ever in the 102 years of football. They say it's even bigger than the 89 Fiesta Bowl game against Notre Dame. They are emotionally higher than kites. And Coach Dick Vermeil, you know, that can be a plus or a minus, depending on what you do with it after the kickoff. No question. And as long as they control it to, and point it for positive play early in the ballgame, gradually they'll settle down. So Don Nealon's Mountaineers up against Dennis Erickson's Hurricanes, and the Mountaineers will handle the ball first. Two very talented freshman return men. They have been a story here for West Virginia. Mike Logan and Rasan Vanderpool back deep. Two outstanding kickoff return people. Number three kickoff return team in the country, averaging 27 yards a return. Two very gifted young athletes. Scott Barnwell, number 39, to put it on the tee. about it what gifted athletes they have returning kickoffs it's all bottled up over there but they don't wrap the arms see they try to grab and strip and they don't get their shoulder pads into them don't wrap him up tightly now you take off and you have a mike logan just a sophomore out of mckeesport pennsylvania turning on the speed and it is a legal return 42 yards on a spectacular return and it will be West Virginia with the ball at the Hurricanes 41 yard line. Some confusion down on the field. Well, Logan came in here averaging 35 yards of return. His what we just saw was not a penalty flag, so it caused confusion down on the 19 yard line, and Barnwell is shaken up. This is what the coaches, and from up here, from afar, look like a penalty flag down at the 19. No penalty on the return. Donnie Nealon's Mountaineers set to go with Jake Kelchner. And that was Scott Barnwell. What a wonderful return this is, Dak. Yeah, it's not a coast return. This is a broken play. But when you have gifted athletes with the balls in their hand like this, that, you know, he can do those kind of things. 
Now Kelchner on the Mountaineers, their first play of the game. Fires complete to Hill at the 35-yard line, and Paul White defending. So it is Jake Kelchner who transferred to West Virginia from Notre Dame. He is the leading quarterback in the nation right now. Eight of six, second and four. Second and four off that six-yard gain here. And that's what the Mountaineers wanted to accomplish with first down. Did not want to be left in second and long against this great defense. Now it is Walker, Robert Walker, blasting to the 30. And a first down, West Virginia. Walker with wonderful speed. When he gets the corner turned, he's a dangerous runner. Rich Bram, a tackle that Dick has liked all season long, especially that straight ahead, that blast blocking. Warren Sapp, he's a tremendous defensive line in the middle. Brian and Patrick, they are the sack artists. Rohan Marley, there was a rumor sweeping Morgantown. In fact, an article that he wouldn't play. He's here. Dexter Siegler, the ringleader. Kelchner again, getting time, and now piled on by Kenny Lopez, 71. Well, he wanted to throw downfield. He couldn't go downfield. He looked for his alternate receiver, Brent. Couldn't find him. By that time, two defensive tackles. I think both Lopez, 71, and Warren Sapp, two outstanding pass rushers. They came into the ball game with 38 sacks, averaging over four game. Really good defensive front. Dick, how good is that defensive line? Now, Barnwell, the kickoff man, bruised a shoulder over there, receiving some treatment on the uh, on the sideline. You can see they're asking him where it hurts there with his Second right down. side. See, there isn't a weakness in there down for Brent. You have to account for all four of those guys. You just can't single up on, uh, double up on one guy. 16-yard loss to the sack. They run the fullback to the 41-yard line, Jimmy Freeman. Well, Mike Jacobs, the offensive coordinator, said they wanted to come out and establish a run to try to slow down that pass rush. And they wanted to do it with counteraction, draw action, some double team blocking, and some nakeds. The quarterback keeping the ball out by himself. Third and 22. Big offensive left tackle number 75 in the middle of your screen on Kevin Patrick, 86. He's getting a little help right there because they're sprint out blocking. See, he has an awfully good jam, but I'll tell you this, you have to jam Kevin Patrick more than once. Sauerbrunn, Todd Sauerbrunn punting. Jonathan Harris, who's replaced the injured Jamie German here today. Sauerbrunn, a superb punter is inside the 10. This one's going to be down at the 3. Todd Sauerbrunn. Whenever Miami changes quarterbacks, it's big news. When they change in the middle of a season, it's a headline event. Ryan Collins, a month ago, out of Pembroke, Hines, Florida, has taken over. Gives him a little bit better running dimension, but do not underestimate his long arm. A very talented deep thrower. Number eight, a sophomore at controls. Donnell Bennett is his lone running back. Bennett, right side stopped at the four by Wes Richardson, the leading tackler of the Mountaineers. You'll see a lot of one back with the Canes. They came into the season thinking they would use two, but Larry Jones will come out alone sometimes. Always talented wide receivers with a great deal of speed. Casey Jones, he is the center on a very talented offensive line. Tim Brown, great athlete defensively for West Virginia, and the man who calls the signals in that secondary is David Mayfield number 30 now second and seven fake the delay roll to the left and Collins will keep it out of bounds but short of the first down the shocker 
Boston College leading Notre Dame 24 to 14. Michigan wiping out Ohio State and leaving the Buckeyes at the mercy of Illinois against Wisconsin to keep alive the Rose Bowl hopes. Alabama dumping Auburn at the half. Florida huge over Vanderbilt. That means that Tennessee has been officially eliminated from the Sugar Bowl. Florida now goes into the SEC championship game against Alabama. The chains are being brought out here. 26-14, Penn State over Northwestern at the half in that game. And the Bruins and the Trojans just getting underway, as are the Badgers and the Illini. And folks in Columbus, Ohio, are asking, what are the words to the fight song for Illinois? <laughs> You can saw that you saw that kind of action, Brent, where they run a bootleg action out there with the quarterback. That's new since Ryan Collins took over the quarterback position. Dickett is now third and inches here for the Hurricane. Well, with Ryan Collins, uh, you can anticipate a quarterback sneak. That's not a, a guarantee, but with that kind of a quarterback, a little quick jump into the gap. Casey Jones, the center. They oh. fumble, fumble. They took the loss. Collins went back on the ball and pounced on it. Collins recovers the fumble. But it forces Miami to punt. They were fortunate to get that back. You'll see the, the ball extended out there in front of Casey Jones's hands. He's going to get that defensive people move back up. The ball bounces out of his hands. Never did get it seated in his hands properly. Most of the time, Brent, when that happens, the quarterback pulls his hands out early. Chrissy punting, and Mike Baker against a savage rush to Baker on the first hop. Baker slips through to the 39. Donnie Nealon's emphasis on the special teams is still paying a dividend. This game in the early going being played in Miami's into the field. CFA College Football on ABC brought to you by Lexus, maker of the 1994 ES, improved, revised, refined, and a word new. Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. The new Naroko Razors, our closest shave ever. And Sony, nothing unleashes the power of music like a Sony. West Virginia had a first and 10 at the 29, then they lost 16 yards on a sack. This is their second series, and they will begin it in hurricane territory again at the 39-yard line. Kelchner, the quarterback. Robert Walker, the lone running back. Walker, left side. Gain of about three before Robert Bass brings him down. John Saunders, how about the battle out west between UCLA and USC? Well, Brent, as you know, the winner goes to the Rose Bowl. Wayne Cook. Fakes the handoff and the little naked bootleg to the end zone, five yards, and UCLA leads USC 7 0. Brent. And folks are going to be very impressed with that Bruin defense. Yes, they lost last week, but it did not give up a touchdown. USC cannot afford to give up a lot of points in that baby. UCLA armed with its quarterback this week. It'll be interesting. Kelchner, right side, almost oh. intercepted. That was White. Paul White. Broke in front of the receiver, nothing but green carpet in front of him. Boy, he, he's disappointed. Look at, he's excited, Brent. He actually should have picked that when he had one pass interception coming into the game and six in his career. Look at him strut. Look at him. <laughs> they practiced that dance for about 15 minutes. On the field here yesterday, they practiced it. <laughs> you know, West Virginia has been using their fullback as a tight end opposite the other tight end, Brent. And that doesn't allow the defensive team to substitute personnel against a two tight end formation. We saw Darren Studstill on the sideline. Did a good job of quarterbacking this team last week. Could see action here today. Kelchner firing complete to Mike Baker at the 26 yard line. First down Mountaineers. You'll see that the West Virginia is moving the pocket just slightly. Not always going to be straight down the middle so the defense see he's going to come out and set up here and then throw back. That breaks the pattern of the setup for the quarterback. Breaks the definition of the pass rush. See, he has a nice little pocket to throw in. There comes Baker right there from the backside. Vanterpool, the freshman slotted to the right. Instead, it's the fullback Freeman to the 22-yard line. 
they're going to run up inside with a fullback on quick action, just enough to try to keep Robert Bass, the fine middle linebacker, at home. You'll see the quarterback will sprint right. He's going to hand it off back. See, and they're going to try to strip the ball out of there. See, they like to do that. Everybody does a good job of that in college football now. Bass, the middle linebacker, making the stop. Second down. They are talented on the defensive side. Walker, a hole in the middle. Walker to the 17 and Rohan Marley. Marley is quite a story. Undersized linebacker, does a great job of delivering the hit, Dick. See, they ran a tackle trap here coming back to the inside. Now watch this as he pulls. See, here he comes. He's going to come back a trap, and he's going to trap Lopez, number 71. Nice job of executing a trap block. And a crisp tackle, wasn't it, by Rohan? You know, Miami kids all tackle real well, Brent. They're good athletes. They run through the contact. They wrap the arms for the most part. Good tackling team. Third down and one. Keltzer's going to throw for it. Now sprinting out of trouble. Throwing back. Incomplete in the end zone. A dangerous throw back to the middle of the field. And it was that pressure up front. Now that leaves West Virginia in a field goal situation in the early going. Uh, Dick, you want to second guess the third down call? Yes, I do. Brent. I <laughs> thought you might. Well, first off, they're not a real good field goal kicking team. They have problems. They have two different field goal kickers, one from 30 yards out in and one from 30 yards out, and they're not real good. I, I really believe they made a mistake. They should have gone ahead and tried to make that first down. They were running the ball pretty effectively. That tackle trap you showed us was great. This is Tom Mazzone, 35-yarder. No good, and oh, would they love to have third down back. We all do that as coaches. Believe me, I've done it. Everybody has done it. But uh, when you're moving the ball and you don't have real good field goal kickers, I always think you're better off trying to get after that first down. Boston, Holly. Now what are the writers going to do? Oh, can I ask you? <laughs> now, Nebraska's number one, coach, if they ask me. <laughs> Last week, Florida State number two, Notre Dame number one, Nebraska three, and Miami four, West Virginia's nine. Here's how the coaches voted. They had Nebraska second. They said they're unbeaten, they deserve it. They had West Virginia higher. They respect an unbeaten football team. The Bull Coalition, though, and that's where they put the two together, and with the combination, it was Notre Dame, Florida State, Nebraska, and Miami. And folks, somebody call the New York Times computer. Someone tell that computer, that the Irish did a pretty good job last week against Florida State. <laughs> What's wrong with those machines, Dad? They're not always right. I can't understand it. Especially the one that handles my bank account. <laughs> this is the one that has the ratings in a jumble. And just as we said, that's one of the more dangerous teams in the country to be playing. It's not over in South Bend, but Boston College can move the football, and they are doing it here today. Donnell Bennett in the game. Ryan Collins, the Hurricane quarterback. Got a blitz. The draw, and he is eaten up. Matt Tafoni, number three, one of the Mountaineer defenders is there, and a whole lot of Birkin going out there. Steve Perkins, number 97. Tafoni leading the cheers right now. Well, there is Frank Costa in the parking. And, Dick, what about the change from Costa to Collins? Well, there's more mobility with Collins in there, and they've done well since the Florida State game with him there, but they haven't played the same kind of football team since they lost to Florida State either. Today will be a big test for Ryan Collins. Second and 12. Collins from the shotgun. Offensive line holds up beautifully. Now an open picked off at the 32 by Mike Collins. Collins to the 30. Collins across the 20 and still going. Collins, a brilliant return to the 8-yard line. Mike Collins getting its 8th career interception here. A senior from Huntington, West Virginia. Quarterback forced out of the pocket. Scrambles to the left of your screen. See, they force him out. He gets outside. Now they're playing very, very loose zone back there. Just watching the quarterback. And when you're just watching the quarterback like that in a loose zone, you can make that play. 
Now, Dick, a couple of storylines come to mind. West Virginia did not take advantage of great field possession, field position on their first two possessions. They must not let this one slip away. You can't give the Hurricanes too many opportunities. Walker to the left. Walker, nothing doing. Corwin Francis, 58. Excellent outside linebacker play by Corwin Francis. He, he, the, the defensive line did their job, and he just scraped off outside that defensive end and took him inside out to the sideline. Nice play, good technique. Another thing, on that replay, Jonathan Harris was wide open, a wide receiver of the Canes. Collins on the move, very hard, hard to, to detect it, yeah. so he didn't pick him up. Now it is going to be second down and goal. What about the Mountaineers going in from this spot on the field? Well, Dick? see, they like to run the option, but Jake Kelsner, their quarterback, has a bad hamstring, and I don't think they'll run the option with him, but they really like to, go, to do it down here. Walker. Walker for perhaps a yard. Not much more against this very talented defense. Well, they've been very efficient inside the red zone, as you see that, 47 times inside. But what makes it outstanding is the percentage of touchdowns. See, very few field goals, more touchdowns. Good inside the red zone. See, they ran that same tackle trap that they ran successfully in the last series on that plate, thinking defensive penetration, they'll trap them and try to get the play that way. So Ups. here's the third and goal. Kelsner going to swing it out to Walker. Walker with a penalty flag down. Penalty flag is thrown. Walker is out of bounds at the eight-yard line. The referee is Terry Monk of the Big East. Rowan Marley read that so quickly and reacted, and I think he is the individual that got blocked illegally, Brent. Let's see what they call. When you say Big East officials, I think of last year. Boy, we saw some dandy calls last year. <laughs> but you were right. That's yeah, exactly what occurred yeah, on this play. That's what happened. Wisconsin thinking Rose Bowl. Thinking, let's get to Tokyo and play for a chance to go to Pasadena. The road to Pasadena always led through Tokyo, didn't it? That's amazing. <laughs> Can you imagine George Perlis thinking that? And the Wisconsin people said, my gosh, we're going to go to Japan and play for the rest of the road. <laughs> Illegal blocking above the boys in the back against the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. Dick, I'm going to go back to that point in uh, Jack Root, Rohan Marley. Such an interesting story. It is indeed. In fact, you know, earlier this week, coming out of Miami was a report that Marley would not play in this game. We talked to Coach Dennis Erickson about that yesterday, and he said it was a surprise to me. He said, in fact, when I read about it in the paper, I had to call Marley up and say, did I miss something? <laughs> Jack, I've got more on that in a moment. I'm going to follow up on that. Did a little water date earlier today. Kelsner with time, deflected, and Baker can't scoop it up. So it is incomplete on third and goal from the 28, and now it is fourth down again. Now, Marley, so I went up and Miami said, unfortunately, Coach Erickson is to blame. <laughs> he was talking about losing German to an injury on the last play of practice, and he said Marley's name, and accidentally he said he won't play on Saturday. The writers writing it down thought they'd lost Marley, too. I know they were cheering here on campus. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Now they have sent Sauerbrunn into the game to attempt this field goal of 45 yards. Coach Nealon explaining he was going to try him on longer ones and is no good. I'm not sure it was a clean exchange and placement, Brent. That ball was kicked so poorly right off the bat. Normally what happens on that, the ball isn't placed properly. If you're a West Virginia fan, you've got to be a little uneasy right now. To be down inside the red zone like this in good field position all three drives, we couldn't quite pick it up on that shot. But to go that, look at Sauerbrunn's turn into his uh, holder right now. Of course, kickers normally do that when they miss. And if you're a Hurricane fan, you're thinking business as usual. Another big game and another great performance by the defense so far. Now the offense needs to stand up. 
Collins out of the shotgun has been shaky. Hits Bennett over here on the right flat. And Bennett is slammed out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And uh, John Saunders, how about the Badgers and the Illini? Brent, you mentioned the trip to Japan against Michigan State next week. Today, they must beat the Illini, as you said. Brent Moss with a one-yard touchdown run. But if they win their last two games, Wisconsin is headed to the Rose Bowl as co-champions of the Big Ten. Right now, Brent, back to you. Yeah, John, the tiebreaker would go all the way back to the last appearance in the Rose Bowl. And I think it's almost like some 30 years since the Badgers have been out there. That was a great run Vander Kelly game in Pasadena. Second down for the Canes and James Stewart, who hit a big run against Rutgers last week. A talented young running back out of Vero Beach, Florida, checks in. Gets into the action on a cutback. Fumble! And West Virginia pounces on it. Wes Richardson. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, changed up the defense that time and went from a four-down lineman to a three-down lineman, thinking he can handle the, uh, the cutbacks better. And you'll see the nose guard right here. He's going to be double. That's Hawkins, number nine, and he fights back off that block right there. There's a hat put right on the football by Derek Wiley, 45, the outside backer. He put his hat on it and knocked it out. Good change up of defense on that series right there, Brent. Erickson's defense under pressure again. They would be wise to go for a big one on first down, Brent. It's Walker sweeping to the right. You called it. Bass comes up. It's second and long now for the Mountaineer offense. These people run so well, Miami does. It's hard just to take the ball and directly run outside them. Normally, you want to use a little counteraction to freeze those inside people or bring the quarterback out on bootlegs, and that's probably eliminated today because of Kelsner's hamstring problem. Dick, the Mountaineer coaches have to be thinking about stud still. No, Kelsner's a very fine, talented quarterback, but they may need a little more mobility at that position to put some pressure on this talented defense. Let's see what happens here. Kelsner going to hand it to Walker. There's nothing going here, folks. Forget about it. 25-yard line and Francis again. See, they flop Corwin Francis to the strong side of the formation toward the tight end because Marley is only 5'8", 205, so he goes to the strong side, and he, he's used to seeing plays run at him behind that tight end's block there, and he does an awfully good job. That was Coach Tuberville calling the defensive signals right there. Excellent defensive football coach. He really did a nice job of explaining to me yesterday, Brent, his concepts in defensing West Virginia's offense today. I was really uh, enjoyed the conversation. That talented Miami front. Third and ten for the Mountaineers. Kelsner. Fires. First down. A penalty flag is down. Eddie Hill, the receiver at the ten-yard line, but a penalty flag is thrown at the 18. That it's going against the Canes. West Virginia, a big third down conversion, apparently. Coach Tuberville said he was going to blitz a lot of those one-back formations. I was sort of looking for it that time on third down. Evidently didn't want to get locked up one-on-one -on -one down there on the 25-yard line. His defense has been under pressure, hasn't it? We have a face mask, a five-yard inadvertent face mask against the defense before the pass was complete. So the play, the penalty declined, the play stands, first down. football could not be more exciting 
and a feast of action coming your way on ABC over the holiday weekend. The Thanksgiving Day Classic, Georgia takes on rival Georgia Tech. Then on Friday, big doubleheader coming your way. There's your leadoff game, and then the national game will be Oklahoma, Nebraska. A chance to check out those Cornhuskers, like West Virginia, not getting a lot of respect. Then on Saturday, Florida State, Florida, or Penn State, Michigan State. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. Still trying to get into the end zone using the fullback, Jimmy Freeman. This is the fourth time West Virginia has had a golden scoring opportunity in the opening quarter, and they have zero on well, the scoreboard. You have to give credit to, to Miami defense, Brent. They came in here giving up only 11.6 points a game, and this, they're demonstrating why they've been able to do that right here. I mean, the off, they've had terrible field position this whole first quarter, and they have done an excellent job of playing defense. Second down and 10. Telsner to Walker, and Walker is slammed at the nine-yard line. It's going to be third down for West Virginia. And again, it was Robert Bass in there with Corwin Francis, 58. Francis all over the field defensively, along with that man, number 49. Obviously a little bit worried about their, about their passing game down in there, a little bit concerned about the turnover factor in that. But the other thing is with the field goal situation as it is, not really great field goal kickers. They've got to make sure they don't take a sack on this third down if they don't or can't get the completion. 38 to 6. The fake Kelsen to throw it. It does to his tight end, Nate Ryan, number 87 at the five-yard line. They still need almost four yards for a first down. Here comes the fourth down decision. They have missed on two field goals. They'll try another one. They'll go back now and try for the third time to get something on that board with Tom Mazzone, the junior, who kicks the short one. Well, he's, he's over one for that distance. In fact, they haven't made a field goal inside the 30 this year. Let's go to John Saunders. How about the Bruins and the Trojans? Brent, the Bruins are lighting up the scoreboard early. Skip Hicks from four yards out. 14 to nothing is the lead in the battle for the Rose Bowl berth. Meantime, Alabama and Auburn. Auburn trying to remain undefeated. Their quarterback, Stan White, knocked out of the game with a bad right knee. Pat Nix, though, his replacement comes in, throws a touchdown on his first play. Bama leads it 14 to 12. Brent. How about that, John? That Alabama-Auburn game is filling two stadiums. Closed circuit television back in Tuscaloosa. And Jonathan Harris says, bring it on. Let's go. Sauerbrunn kicking off. upstairs about four tries and only three points and how happy Dennis Erickson might be with that. Well, let me tell you what's happened on the Mountaineer sideline. It has tempered the emotions just a little bit with all of the players. As we said at the top of the show, they were extremely high. Well, being denied as they were with those missed field goals, they've settled down just a little bit. So there may be a silver lining inside that cloud. You know, Jack and Dick, one of the problems here that Nealon's facing, the kicking woes. I mean, you, you kick it out of bounds on a kickoff like that after a field goal, you bring the Canes out to their best starting field position of the game, right? The 35-yard line. Well, your I, kicking game in a situation like this, when you're up against a very talented Miami team, you get yourself in trouble. No question. 
obviously wasn't talking about his place kickers when he said their special teams were the best he's ever had. Bennett back in at running back. Bennett to the left side. Bennett is stuck. Derek Wiley, 45. Good defensive line play prior to Derek Wiley making that play. Again, defensive lineman forcing the running back to move parallel to the line of scrimmage, and Wiley coming up and doing what he's supposed to do. A six foot, 11 and a half inch high jumper. That's an athlete playing outside linebacker. Second down. You can see how he avoids the first man, and he's sacked at the 17-yard line. Scott Geskins. The mobility didn't help him that. The mobility didn't help him that time. Scott Gaskins had leverage on the ball. He's outside in a three-point stance. You see him coming off the ball right now. You see number 67 in the middle of the screen. Wiley flushes him, gets him outside. Now he's coming off to the right side of your screen. You'll see him appear. Here he comes, and he makes a lunge and gets him by the foot. And a 14-yard loss. 